Hello and welcome back to my kitchen, where today we will be baking. And no, we're not baking any leaves, today we're baking bread. Now as it stands, bread is one of the oldest foodstuffs known to mankind. We've been making it since ancient Egypt days, since ancient Roman days, since the days of when eating it would cause us to need to take a trip to the dentist. But hopefully these days our bread making is more sophisticated than that, as we have such things as banana bread, apple bread, gingerbread. Next time. Or today, what we have, peanut butter bread. From peanut butter biscuits to peanut butter bread. We're evolving. Somehow. Start to go for the flour, requiring two cups or 280 grams, which that looks alright. It's home baking, we don't need exact measurements here. Half a tablespoon of salt. But considering how this is a peanut butter bread recipe, I don't think we actually need all that much uh, salt. Considering how the peanut butter is already in there. I should have done this ahead of time. When all else fails, make cuts. That's what they teach you at business school. Not that anyone knows, I never went. So it's only about half a tablespoon, so we'll approximate as we're grinding it. Oh, and it would help if I took the top off. That's about right. Next up, four tablespoons of baking powder. See, this is why you pre-do things. Speaking of which, preheat your oven to 180 degrees, but since my oven is... shit, I'm going to have to do it at max temperature and hope for the best. Is it teaspoons or tablespoons? It doesn't say. Uh, since it's four, I'm going to guess it's teaspoons. And now for the sugar, or the sweetener in this case. No, thank you, I'm sweet enough. Ha 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 ha. There we go. I'm just transferring to a large bowl, which I probably should have used from the beginning, but ah oh well. It's home baking. Basically just assume it's all chaos. And while I'm doing this, is the meme stage, first of all. As I mix by hand. Since the last time I did a baking video, it kind of went a bit pear-shaped, and by that I mean... I decided I wasn't going to do it again unless I had something interesting to talk about, and so I decided that if I was going to do it again, I would combine it with something else that greatly intrigues me. So today, while we're also making bread, we're going to discuss something that is equally as ubiquitous to martial history as bread is to our cultural history. The Cross Guard. Where did it come from? How did it come about? And, well, why do we love it so much? Now, as I add this, the Cross Guard has been known across human history to just be one of those more infamous attributes of medieval swords. You've got the Templar Swords, you've got the Great Swords, the Sword and a Half Swords, or, in more modern equivalents, Kylo Ren's lightsaber. Odd choice, that. Come in. What's a baking video without cats? Guys, I'm busy here. I... Now it seems that our earliest cultures seem to have some early concept of the... <clears throat> now it seems that our... Guys. Now it seems that our earliest cultures seem to have some concept of the cross guard in some form or another. The Vikings had their version, although this is more... This is more relatively recently than some other examples. Probably going further back, you would find something like the Gladius, which was a, which was a sword dating back to the Roman times, as noted by the gladiator naming. Yes, hello, do you want attention? Do you want biscuits? Gonna have to wait a moment. There is some sub-elements of what some subspecialization, specialization of 
I turn on the camera and they immediately all want attention. There is, an, there is a subspecialization in which Genghis Khan was said to have some form of the cross guard. This is a bad habit that he's gotten into of trying to climb up my legs. You should see him at breakfast. I just need to add the peanut butter. But since we're looking more into medieval forms of the cross guard, it doesn't really matter in this context. Although examples such as the Jian also have examples of what you could consider the cross guard. And there are some Indian examples of swords which could also be considered to have the cross guard. But as we're looking more medieval, it doesn't really factor in here. Now unfortunately it's not as though we, we can just have a sit down record, a clear cut developmental record of how the cross guard came about. It's not as though we have the diary of some blacksmith who one day decided to take a a guard for a sword, and decided to thin it out a bit to have wider range of cover for the hand. Instead we have to get- excuse me. Instead we have to guesstimate and figure out for ourselves why this came about. Just by eyeballing it, you could tell there were some reasonings. What I just said is that, of course, the thinner guard... The thinner guard means greater protection for the hand, which is pretty much a very good reason on its own, but another reason is... What are you about to do, mister? You're about to be starting something. But another reason, even more likely, is cost. And resource management? No! There's milk in this, that's why you're going for this, isn't it? It wasn't- they weren't caring until I put the milk in. No one cared who I was till I put on the mask. You get down here. This is why dogs are better. This earlier swords, which had some leaning towards the cross guard, such as the earlier Gladius, as well as some Greek swords from the more Mycenaean or Hellenistic era of around the Trojan War, they could be interpreted I think at this point I'm gonna have to hand do it. Scrapey scrape. Ah 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 You, Mr. Menace This is the required cat cameo in which he wrecks the entire video. Would you like batter on you, mister? That's how you get batter on you. It's a very wet dough, I'm starting to get worried. Now, of course, the reasoning behind why such a thing as the cross guard could exist goes back to, well, the same reason as why the peanut butter bread existed in the 1920s, during the Wall Street, Wall Street crash. Much more cost-effective, because, of course, peanut butter is a shelf-stable product, so too was the cross guard more cost-effective. In theory, especially once they refined the uh, process of making it, it required less material. You... Mr. Ah, 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 ah. It required less material, unlike the cat pie I'm about to make. And ensured greater protection for its users, also meaning that it would have better quality, uh, not quality control, also meaning it would have greater longevity. And as the process continued, and as it became more no notable, with Christian warriors, especially the Knights Templar, it became more associated with the church and holy warriors, most especially because it could create it could create a quite decent cross to use while praying or to create a grave for a fallen warrior. I can't trust you to this is why I need an extra pair of hands while I'm doing this. I need to wash my hands, but I need to keep you at bay. Yeah, you're right, there is a lot of spare peanut butter in there. That's a waste. I'm not going to let just you have it all. Some last bits of peanut butter. I can't let it go to waste. This is meant to be a cost-effective recipe for the whole family. It is not where you let things go to waste. Ah! You pest of the first water. Get out of here. You never work in this town again. Oh, this looks good. But I think I have too much for the loaf tin that I have. So, I'm going- I think I've- I came up with this plan earlier. 
There's nothing in here which should give me some alert, so. That butter, it has that buttery taste. And I can get the peanut butter through, I can taste the peanut butter through it all. So as you can see, my loaf tin is a bit small. So, we have a second tin. Ha ha! And it's made of glass. Oh, and all the best things made of glass. Yeah, I know, that bread just just smells so good, doesn't it? Oh, it might actually fit. I might have been wrong, it could fit after all. Ooh! Oh, now hold on, wait a minute. Why is it that cats demand your attention at the most inopportune of times? I'm going to have a lot of cleanup to do. Sure. Yeah. And that probably goes back to the reason of why the cross guard has stuck around for as long as it has. Beyond just the religious symbolism which, has been, which it has come to be associated as, it's efficient in its methodology. It is cost effective in terms of materials, and it just looks good. It has those three required components which just make it so good. Unless you put it on a lightsaber, then it just gets ridiculous. Seriously, why did they do that? If they made the shaft if they made the cross guard out of the same material as the hilt, it would have made sense. But if they made it out of lightsaber, they made it as a lightsaber blade. That just reduces the co the effectiveness of it, reduces the quality of the the cost effectiveness of it, and it looks silly. Ha 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 ha! Your costume, costume is ridiculous. ridiculous. Imagine, like it was black iron, a black iron hilt with the black iron cross guard, and then the red lightsaber blade with a crackle. It would have looked so good! And this goes in for roughly an hour. So we shall see... Woo! Already steaming. There we go. Just hop this in, and you, mister... We haven't had this guy for that long, and he's already causing problems. There we go, and we leave it in for about an hour, so it is now time to get the stopwatch. There we go, stopwatch is set. And I'm going to hold on to you, so you don't get into any more trouble. Honestly, why did we call him Alfred? We should have called him Alvin. He's that much of a troublemaker. So that will do it for the making of this peanut butter bread. And that will do it for our talk about the cross guard. And now if you actually want to see what the bread actually tastes like and how it is, then you'll have to hop over to my Patreon for the exclusive content over there. There, I'm going to be posting all sorts of exclusive content, mostly more on the side of creative writing and some behind the scenes stuff, but I will post some extra videos and some extra essays on there if I get the time. Currently for $5 a month or for £4.50 a month, which is less than what Netflix pays at the moment. I mean, that's really good in and of itself. Then you'll get all of the exclusive content. I will introduce more tiers as we go along and as it picks up more steam, but as it's early days, we're just going to go a bit slow for first. But that will do it for today. Thank you for watching this week's video, and until next time, everyone, peace be with you.